The family of MH370's captain, Zahari Ahmed Shah, has consistently rejected the idea that he could ever have been responsible for deliberately crashing the jet into the ocean. But our investigation reveals that the only possible scenario on the evidence is that a skilled pilot did deliberately land the 777 on the water. And the strongest clue is a piece of evidence Malaysia hasn't even examined. A small piece of wing called the flapperon. Veteran crash investigator Larry Vance believes the damage to its trailing edge could only have been caused by the force of water as it was crash landed by a pilot. The momentum of that, dragging that little flapper on through the water, uh, would be absolutely enormous. The force of the water is, is really the only thing that could make that jagged edge that we see. It wasn't broken off. If it was broken off, it would be a clean break. You couldn't even break that thing. I, I know from experience that it's, it's, it's wide. If you wanted to break that off, you, you couldn't do it and make it look like that. That had to be eroded away. If you have a hard time understanding how water could cut through a solid wing, take a look at this. centimetres of solid metal cut like butter with nothing more than compressed water. Today that two metre component was boxed up and flown to France to be studied further. Would you, if you were in charge of the investigation, have wanted that flapper on in Australia? Absolutely. No doubt about it. The ATSB's Peter Foley leads Australia's search for MH370, a search dependent on Malaysia's cooperation Malaysia and honesty. To read out the joint statement, please. Why on earth have the French got this flapper on? And why isn't it with you guys, who are, after all, helping the Malaysians with the investigation? Um, it's a hard one, I, and perhaps one you should put to the French judi judicial authorities. Uh, the investigation team have briefed us. Incredibly, a year on uh, from yes, when the flapperon uh, was discovered, uh, Malaysia's uh, transport uh, minister uh, admits uh, his uh, investigators uh, still haven't been able uh, to take possession uh, of it. Request. So uh, we are unable to uh, get the details from uh, the, the French government. That's extraordinary, Minister. One year on from when that flapperon was recovered, you're telling us that you haven't received any information from the French? No, this is under the, um, the IQO investigation team. Can I just check this, sir? You're yeah. avoiding the issue. Are you saying it wasn't a controlled ditching of the aircraft? Uh, at the moment, we don't have any evidence to confirm that it is uh, controlled ditching. Can you, can you tell us, sir, simply, have you been briefed on whether the flapperon indicates a controlled ditching? Uh, yes or no? That's not. We, we did not, uh, we I'm were sorry. not briefed on that detail, sir. Ministers, if you will allow me, please, ladies and gentlemen. The Malaysians you, sir, shut down our questions. Possible. And we are trying I to get an I understand your concerns, sir. I think, Minister. I think it's been a frustration for the investigation. It's now becoming clear that the damage to the flapperon does indicate a controlled ditching, which means there was very likely a pilot guiding the aircraft to the very end. This would cut across all the assumptions made in the search, as the ATSB's Peter Foley now admits for the first time. We have also seen some analysis from the French that suggests that it's a possibility that it was in a deployed state. Doesn't the visual evidence on the flapperon suggest that the flapperon was extended? Yes. 
And in a further stunning admission, Peter Foley concedes that if the plane was piloted, we may be looking in the wrong place. If there was a rogue pilot, it's possible, isn't it, that the plane was taken outside of the parameters of the existing search area? Yeah, if you glided the plane or indeed controlled ditched the plane, it, it has an extended range potentially. When the flapper arm was found, then everybody should then have concluded, in my opinion, that there was this was a human engineered event. That, that, there's no other explanation. There's no other explanation. And now, even more evidence to support the rogue pilot theory. A wing flap found on the coast of Tanzania and brought to Australia by the ATSB after Malaysia failed to recover it. I notice on the photographs of that flap there is the similar erosion on the trailing edge of the flap to Correct. what we also saw on the flap. Correct. Rock. And we're, we are looking to see whether or not we can w work out whether that flap was extended at the end of flight. So isn't, in, in isn't a sense, most... your premise in a sense, your premise is right. I mean, we want to understand whether if we if we find that that flap was extended at the end of flight, it suggests a different end of flight scenario. If the flap was extended at the mm -hmm. end of flight. It means, doesn't it, that there was somebody in charge of the aircraft? Absolutely. The data recovered from Captain Zahari's private flight simulator shows he simulated a route to the furthest reaches of the Southern Ocean. The physical evidence from the recovered wing parts suggests whoever was piloting the jet tried to keep it intact in a controlled ditching on water. OK, Bruce, take us down. OK, now... We... So we're right out over the ocean we're now. Right you, over can, the ocean. you can see the waves. You're at 2,000 feet. Let's turn a little bit away. There's an island over there. Bruce Margolis is a right, senior 777 down. pilot and instructor. All right, I'm slowing down and we're going to start extending the flaps. We're at now, 1,500 feet. That's right. Our rate of descent is 2,000 feet a minute. I cannot believe what we're about to do. In this 777 simulator, we asked him to try to land the jet on water and to keep it as intact as possible. 1,000 feet. Oh. What's going to hit first? Probably the engines. The engines are going to hit first and they'll be ripped off. And it's going to be a massive whack, is it? The noise will be too terrible. Is it hard to control the aircraft? No, no it's, very easy to, it's very easy to control the aeroplane. You can virtually hands off. OK, this is it, Bruce. 100, 100 feet, we're going in. It's a horrible feeling. It's not easy to do. Oh. It's going probably in with what they call ground effect. I don't know about you, I find this very emotional, don't you? This, It's in the water. If you've been able to land with as little impact as possible, the engines are ripped off. Engines are ripped off. But there's a good chance the fuselage is largely intact, isn't it? It's possible. Very possible, that. That's going to fill with water and not sink to the bottom. Not, not necessarily immediately. It, it may, if it's still in one piece, it could, it, it could actually float for a while and then it'll, it'll start sinking. Do you think that that plane is still largely intact somewhere on the bottom of the Indian Ocean? I think that the, that the fuselage certainly is intact. I think that the airplane is in big pieces for the most part and uh, is somewhere on the bottom of the Indian Ocean. Absolutely it is. There is the possibility that this plane was taken into the southern Indian Ocean by a suicidal pilot. What do you fear most about that scenario? I fear that they were all still alive and trying to get in there and they knew it was going on, that they became aware of it and that they were trying everything in their power to change the situation. 
The last 28 months have been an ordeal for Danica Weeks and her boys, Lincoln and Jack. As it looks more likely that her husband, Paul, was the victim of a calculated mass murder, a conversation she had with the Malaysian Prime Minister's wife just a month after the tragedy has taken on a chilling significance. What did you say to her? I said, find my husband. You need to find my husband. What are you doing? You need to do everything in your power to bring him home to us. What did she say to you? She told me that it was very horrible that someone would do this to 238 innocent people. She was insinuating the pilot took the plane. It now seems likely that MH370 may never be found. That is surely tragedy enough and heartbreak to those left behind. That this tragedy may be compounded by, at the least, incompetence by the Malaysian authorities and, at worst, a possible cover-up is surely unforgivable. How important is it for your little boys <laughs> that one day you can give them an answer about what happened to their dad? That's extremely important. They deserve to know what happened to their father. Not this never-ending aviation mystery of all time. It's their dad. And for Paul, for Lincoln and for Jack, I will keep fighting to do that and to give them the truth and the answer they deserve, we all deserve.